Chapter 6, Burning the Daylight. The afternoon was drawing on, but all four of them were still up on Crow Hill, avoiding the so-called real world down below. For the Babayan brothers, this felt akin to what a free diver must feel like getting fresh air out of the water every now and then. And even though it was starting to get chilly on that hilltop, the two Babayan brothers were surprisingly in good spirits all of a sudden. The wine and extra food they brought might have helped, but Chili Sue rubbed her face and frowned. Yes, alien slip space weapons, Mike insisted. Fucking around with particles at the level of the plank length. Could be worse, Dale even speculated nervously. As Mike resumed explaining Weeks' new plank length theory to Dixie, Chili kept staring at the countryside. She soon turned around and smiled to herself. She could still see that her best friend had no clue of what Mike was saying. Dixie pretended to listen, his eyes glazed with a catatonic look in them, comatose and oblivious, the same look he'd usually have if he had been watching too many cartoons. While Dixie was probably daydreaming about anime, Chili finally shook the cobwebs out of her head and asked to hear out this crazy plank length theory for herself one more time. What a crazy theory! Yet despite the condescending tone in Mike's voice whenever she'd asked for clarifications, Chili at least appreciated that this crackpot idea seemed to fill more gaping holes than anything else explaining the spook activity all over town. At least better that the powers that be, or whoever really ran their incompetent government around here, seemed to try to explain. Hell, say Dark Naropa might really be behind everything, Mike Babane speculated excitedly as he let his mind wander. He loved bragging about subjects he knew a lot about. If not the plank length, then... Oh, come on, said Dale. Just hear me out, said his brother. Maybe that explains everything, really. Maybe there's a connection. Maybe it's that simple. Even the prophetic ability you got in your own head, he motioned towards Dixie. As if to reinforce his point, the timing to the increased UFO sightings did appear to be growing around the planet. I kind of like the new spank length theory better, said Chili. Help me out, though. Plank length, Mike corrected her. New plank length theory. You want to hear it one more time? It's hard to understand, she confessed. Too happy to oblige, Mike went on to explain again how the plank length in space-time all over the universe worked, and how there were really only three theories that made the most sense to what was going on. Spook sightings in Dixie's dreams, then, Chili said after a moment. So let me see if I get it. The plank length, you say, the smallest... She fumbled for words. The edges of the universe, Mike corrected her. The smallest units frontiering a vast unknown. At the edges of the smallest subatomic particles existing in physical time and space, where neither math nor instruments were able to explore anything smaller that's existing in those dimensions at that level. Yes, that, said Dixie as he snapped out of his little daydreaming coma and he tried hard to articulate what he was considering in his head, but nothing happened. It's the more paranormal frontier beyond what exists smaller than subatomic particles we know of, and beyond strings in theory, Mike repeated. The point is, if this vast void existing between the physics of each subatomic particle is actually getting larger, then perhaps it would allow for more spooky stuff to exist if those patches are getting bigger, see? Seeing how something exists everywhere in subatomic space that's not part of the universe, does that make sense? Not, Not fully, fully, Dixie and Chili declared together. It sounds interesting, but my brain's fried, Chili admitted with some frustration. She wished Natalie or her pothead neighbor was around. Dale looked at his brother and then at Dixie. I thought you were a science nut, he said to Dixie. <laughs> no, more like a poser, Dixie grudgingly admitted defeatedly. If it's on TV and it's entertaining, and I can watch it a hundred times... My point is, maybe your psychic ability is just one of the perks of this happening, said Mike. Damn, I still don't get how, Dixie confessed. Please humor me one more time. But after so many attempts to explain plank theory to his science illiterate friends, Mike finally threw up his hands. The point is, he said to them, my cousin's research team thinks that when plank length is by account stretching, something weird happens to everything before it writes itself. How do they know all this? Chili wondered. Conjecture. Pure mathematical theory, Mike explained. Last data this was observed, they speculate happened at the beginning of the Ice Age. Or maybe it was the Bronze Age. I don't freaking remember. Just more letdowns down rabbit holes. 
Dale warned them. I still think it's all coincidence. Chili Sue rubbed her head in frustration. There was too much to take in. She was putting a lot of effort, straining her mind like this, thinking about the irony of it all. She slapped her own face a few times. All her energy could have been better used that afternoon to study for the stupid algebra test. What a waste of time, she thought. It was probably best that Dixie got checked out soon. You think this theory is a waste of time too, huh? Mike asked Chili Sue. He could read the look on her face. I hate to say it, but I think I agree with Dale, she confessed after a moment. Dixie just sat there, not knowing what to think. I just hate it that I always seem to get wrong what I should be doing with my time, she continued half to herself. Sitting there straining to understand maybe some make-believe theory instead of being responsible. She looked right at Dixie on that clifftop. We could have spent today going to the... I don't know why we've done stuff like this for so long. No offense taken, Mike said rather insulted. And it's not make-believe. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's interesting, Chili admitted. You have any way to prove this stuff? You can't prove stuff like this, genius. Try to understand. It's all cutting edge. But it does make a lot of sense if you can fathom it. Chili chuckled darkly and looked away. Yup, I'm sorry. It's not you guys. It's not your fault, she told Mike. We probably should have been studying today, don't you think? She said to Dixie. Dixie nodded. Even though in his mind, deep down, he would have rather done anything, including entertaining the idea of jumping off this cliff than studying for that stupid exam. Mike was not amused. You say you all have these questions all the time, Mike told her, or at least you both used to, about how most people are too lazy to bother and think of things that are relevant besides the stupid stuff like friends and family. Friends and family who are equally confused don't save you from confusion, see? So if it's true you like pondering, why don't you two read more then, like my cousin, if you're such truth seekers? Chili didn't have an immediate answer to that. But the reminder that here was another irony she was a failure at made her self-esteem plummet even more. She tried to put up a brave face, but the words were tough. I've kind of wondered that, Mike continued somewhat insensitively. I'm not trying to be a dick, he explained. But why would you not want to? Maybe that's your biggest existential problem right there, Dale interjected half-teasingly, not taking the hint. Secretly, so unmotivated. Maybe you bombing your, all your tests. Maybe that's what's really amplifying your stress in the first place. It's not so much you seek answers. You're just too lazy to seek a cure to your laziness. No, you don't. You don't know what goes on in my head. Chili defended herself with a strange look in her eyes, half offended, half defeated. Reading stuff is not the full cure for... Oh, I can't explain. Why the hell should I have to? She turned towards the cliffside and stared at the horizon of Kincankerville in the distance. Where the hell do we go for answers? She demanded. But she was speaking to herself now. How about being open-minded? How about school for starters? Dale laughed right back, completely unfazed and misunderstanding her. It was no use trying to explain anything to Chili and Dixie. Mike concluded that no matter how he tried to justify his position, the two of them sat there fatigued or phased at the heavy-handed truths the Babayan brothers had just dished out to them. It was getting awkward up on that clifftop, and after saying what he had just said to Chili, Mike could feel the tension in the air. Well, what are you ultimately getting at anyway with that? Plank-growing theory, Chili grunted after a bit. All I was trying to conclude to your friend here, if it helped, is that Maybe, aside from his psychic dream here, maybe through these greats existing in the universe getting bigger, maybe his strange abilities come from the bits of the unknown. That, and more unnatural activity besides. Oh, here we go, Dale grunted in turn, half annoyed, half amused. He knew where his brother was going again with this. And yes, maybe there really are invisible aliens living among us now, Mike went on all stemming more abundant than ever, now that Saic Dark Naropa landed. Sorry, started existing. I don't know how to explain it all detailed, but weeks could tell you much better. Chili put her hands on her head and rubbed her forehead. She really wanted to go home now. Saic Dark Naropa. The most warped, asinine, and poorly counter-defended conspiracy theory of them all. A few elections ago, a strange cloud phenomenon, a dust storm, 
had clouded much of southwestern Russia and the Middle East. The storm never left, and then the government set up direct energy lasers defense around this area. And everything in there, all knowledge within it and communication passing into it disappeared like an event horizon. And then all the weird stuff especially started happening around on the planet. Weirder than the second flood. It was a nice anomaly to think about. Or stupid, depending on her mood. But right now, she had too many other things on her plate. Career prospects are tough, Mike teased her as he guessed what her problem was. Imagine all these things happening for real if they're true. And on top of that, bombing your courses at the same time, he added as his brother laughed. Times are interesting. Interesting anywhere but here, mused Dixie, meaning King Cankerville. Including here, said Mike. It's either what I said or something coming up from there, he added, pointing towards the north. I think we really do live near a paranormal gold mine. I know the district always ignores it, but I can't think of a better way to explain what's going on. You said it yourself, Chile. When the conspiracy theories start to make more rational sense in the evening news, we've got a problem. You've always felt something's going on behind the scenes. Mike straightened up and looked at her. Look, I'm sorry if I touched a nerve, he told her. I don't even know what, would that, what that would be, but I feel like I have to walk on eggshells now. Chili Sue just muttered something inaudible to herself. Let's just go, she told him, and motioned to head down the cliff. Fine, whatever, said Mike. You know, you used to be like really totally into this kind of stuff. As far as I can tell, then she just got all of a sudden shut down, he referred to her in third person as he looked at Dixie. And right when things get more interesting, she doesn't even try. What gives? He asked somewhat annoyed. Dixie did not reply, but grimaced and kept staring at the countryside as he reached back on his left elbow. Do you really care, or are you just trying to ask stuff to mock me? Chili replied rather brusquely. Or did you have a real question? Something intelligent? Mike looked at his brother and laughed. <laughs> She's so emo now. It's like she doesn't even try. Just plays the victim. Jeez, leave her alone, dickhead, said Dixie. Chili put her hands under her armpits, and as she stared at the ground, she temporarily radiated an anguished look she couldn't conceal. Poor Chili. Dixie could sense what she was thinking. So awkward. Acting so awkward that it even made the Babayan brothers more uncomfortable. But they finally let her be, and continued to debate to each other about Mike's conspiracy theories as they all walked back to the car. The car ride home wasn't any less awkward. As the Babayan brothers continued to talk about strange stuff like the anomaly of Sake, Dark Naropa, and other geopolitics, Chili remained silent behind the wheel with Dixie in the passenger seat, still holding the loose glove compartment with his knees. For 15 minutes, these two remained silent, overhearing all sorts of strange notions about the weather that Mike was bringing up in the back seat. Soon Mike brought up the urban legends regarding the desolate wastelands of Anakaland up north. If you accept Weeks' multidimensional theory with all the nuclear bomb testing, Mike proposed, maybe we really have done damage to these so-called realms where these beings come from as much as we've done here. Dale had to laugh. <laughs> it's so insane you actually believe that. Just because Weeks uses high-level jargon? Well, why not, said Mike. It only makes sense. Seismic waves of some sort must have permeated into their hyperdimensional atmosphere. Blah, 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 blah. Soon a pointless argument broke out in the back seat. After a while, Chili finally broke her silence. It's like something's in the air, she privately confessed to Dixie. Listen to them. All the bad news, even these two dorks seem on edge, more than normal. Dixie nodded, but had nothing to say. I'm sorry. I know there's a lot on your plate, and I probably haven't been helping either, she went on. I've been negative myself, but with all the confusion around, we shouldn't let ourselves get this on edge. We're bigger than that. Suddenly, like a bad omen, a funeral procession cut in front of them. Six minutes went by, and then after that, they ran into two one-way construction detours on the way back, taking the Afrinerny Highway to avoid further congestion. They did great until they slammed into another traffic jam on the highway. Apparently, the sudden descent of fog in the area was creating quite the bottleneck. It almost felt like they were in a bad cartoon. I still stand by my word, Chili told Dixie. Finally, as the traffic cleared and the Babayan brothers continued to argue in the back, Dixie looked at the trees passing by them and scoffed to himself. 
Yeah, thanks, Chili. Hey, he had a legitimate excuse to feel on edge. Aside from potentially needing to see a doctor and his car, job, and academic problems, the fog reminded him of a thought that Chili had recently planted in his head. What if what you feel you're good at in life is insignificant to everyone else? What then? How do you feel? This day keeps getting better and better, Dixie muttered to himself. And as if on cue, Dale's heavy-handed diatribe in the back seat could be heard louder now that they had rolled the back windows up. Boring realms, they call it. Boring's relative, I agree. Dixie could hear Dale. I'll at least agree with that. Especially for you two, huh? He laughed teasingly to Dixie and Chili. Boring <laughs> should seem perfectly fine to you, seeing how you contribute to the boredom. You haven't said a word since we left Crow Hill. Well, how about... Shut up, unless you have something intelligent to say, Chili called right back. You haven't said anything interesting since you got in the car. Not worth getting involved in your dumb debates. Hey, when's that test again? Dale asked her. He then gave them a playful rant about how screwed they were. So unmotivated. Dixie, by the way, sorry about the car, Mike broke in. Fixing it is cheaper than getting a brand new one. But you may want to figure out soon how you're going to get that thing inspected at the end of the month. I noticed, too, that the rust stains are worse. And blah, blah, blah. Dixie rubbed his face in anguish as Mike tried to give him crappy advice on what to do. What a shitty week to be alive, Dale laughed nervously. Ignoring them, Dixie and Chili kept staring at the passing streets of Kincankerville while Mike, hating their awkward silence, kept talking passive-aggressive smack to his brother about how unpleasant, victimized people were. After Chili finally dropped off the Babayan brothers, she breathed a sigh of relief. Creeping shit, she told Dixie. I just wanted to relax, but everything's gone opposite. She looked at her friend, slumped down on the passenger seat, shoulders bent, Double chin due to fatigue. I can't imagine this helped you, she told him. I'm sorry. When they hit the spoiled sport, Chili kept apologizing that the trip had been rather useless. It was my idea, she repeated. I think... But her word fell silent. What? You think what? Dixie insisted. Nothing, said Chili. She had just sipped a smoothie that appeared to have temporarily revived her spirits. Although she insisted it was dumb for them to not stay positive in general, Dixie knew she was full of it. Listen, he told her. I know it's more inspiring to be upbeat, but there's no life behind it, he chortled rather grimly. The next couple days are going to suck, and I'd rather know what you're really thinking. No, you don't, Chili replied. Oh, come on, I'm not a wuss. I can handle it. I think actually might might be right. About the increase in haunted activity? No. She took a deep breath. This may not be the best time to say it, but about how we're full of shit. She took another deep breath and sighed while she let her tea carelessly spill all over the table while she rocked it. Sooner or later, we're going to have to accept reality. Reality? asked Dixie. Yeah, she grunted. It doesn't even matter to what happened to me. Or you, for that matter. It doesn't even matter what I believe, and how maybe one of us, or any fool that thinks like us somewhere out there may be right. We're going to have to accept that our parents understand the game and knew what they were talking about. We might as well plunge into it now, sooner than later.